Good morning. My name is Karen Soule, and I'm the Provost and Dean here at St. Mary College. I'm so pleased to welcome you to this special convocation honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. During this dream week and every day, let us be inspired by the words, ideas, and acts of Dr. King because the world is calling. It is calling for our courage, for our voices, for our engagement, and for our action. Together, we step forward into an uncertain world and toward a better future. Together, we build a beloved community. I am Reverend Libby Broderick, your college chaplain here at Centenary. Will you please join me in an attitude of prayer? We lift our prayers in unison today in memory of the great Martin Luther King Jr. who gave himself completely to others and served with passion to bring about justice equality, compassion, and peace. We lift our hearts today together for the oppressed who are broken and brokenhearted at the loss of loved ones due to unspeakable acts of injustice. We lift our cries today for mercy from the hate and the violence that has infected our communities. And we plead for an end to the shootings and for reconciliation that lifts all of our brothers and sisters. We lift our voices for a peace that restores and replenishes that we may all love each other completely in a world where we share respect and dignity with one another. Instill in us the desire and the dream to be agents of change, to serve others and to rejoice in community as did Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We pray with all the power among us and in the strength of unity for the day when we will see the fulfillment of the dream that we become the beloved community. Amen and amen. Good morning. This week, Centenary celebrates its 13th MLK Dream Week festivities. The first MLK convocation was held January the 20th, 2009. The theme for that year was keeping the dream alive. During the first convocation, participants watched the historic inauguration of the country's first African-American president, Barack Obama, followed by his inauguration speech. 12 years later, the country will witness its first African-American female vice president's momentous inauguration. This year's Dream Week theme is becoming the beloved community. As I reflect on the world today, this year's theme is definitely appropriate. The beloved community is a term Dr. Martin Luther King promoted when he addressed civil rights supporters at the end of the Montgomery bus boycott in 1956 by declaring ending segregation was not, on, not only the goal, but rather the end is reconciliation, the end is redemption, and the end is the creation of the beloved community. Dr. King devoted his life to creating the beloved community. 
By doing so, he showed us a path to a society that maximizes empathy, compassion, and love, and also leads to health and well being. We can realize Dr. King's dream, but to get there, we need to deal successfully with unresolved issues of class and race. The beloved community Dr. King envisioned is a society based on justice equal opportunity, and the love for one's fellow human being. In its global vision in which all people can share in the wealth of the earth, poverty, hunger, homelessness will not be tolerated because international standards of human decency will not allow it. Racism of all forms of discrimination, bigotry, and prejudice will be replaced by all inclusive spirit of sisterhood and brotherhood. In 1950, during a brief correspondence with Clarence Jordan, a biblical scholar, Dr. King wrote, I hope you will gain some consolation from the fact that in your struggle for freedom and a true Christian community, you have a cosmic companionship. God grant that this tragic midnight of man's inhumanity to man will soon pass and a bright day break of freedom and brotherhood will come into being. Fast forward to 2021. We still await that daybreak. While much has been done, so much more remains. This will never be a world of equality, of fairness, or human decency that leaves room for no poverty, prejudice, or violence unless we build it. Bold actions speak louder than words. Freedom fighting is not for the faint at heart. Working together side by side is what will continue to move us from this tragic midnight into a glorious morning. As Dr. King so powerfully stated, darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. So today I challenge you to get to know one another despite your differences. We cannot allow systems of oppression such as racism to separate and disconnect us. Whether it is around race or class or gender or age or language or some other difference real or imagined, Let's do our part to become the solution, not the problem. Let's do our part to build and becoming the beloved community.
morning. I think I hope all of you know I'm Chris Holloman. I'm the president of Centenary College, and it's truly an honor to be able to introduce our speaker today. You can read Cynthia Fierro Harvey's biography in your program, uh, which is available online. I'm not going to, to go over it. It's an honor and a privilege to work with her and learn from her. We could have been, for this occasion, we could have been like Dorothy, who went out and looked and looked and finally found what she needed right in her own backyard. We have one of the great voices for justice and for the beloved community in our own backyard in Bishop Harvey. She has been a truly prophetic and loud voice for justice, for peace, for reconciliation and for service. I think like many of us who are in leadership positions right now, we didn't really know, we certainly didn't expect what we were getting into. I suspect when Bishop Harvey ascended to the Episcopacy in Louisiana, she expected hurricanes, but probably not pandemics, probably not the social divisions that have emerged. She's a truly important figure and I'm so honored that we do have her in our backyard serving on our board of trustees. I'm grateful that she was on the search committee that hired me, so that was a, a good thing too. Uh, as, as we move forward, her leadership has been recognized by her peers as she uh, is the current president of the Council of Bishops. And for those of you who are not familiar with United Methodist Polity, that's uh, all the bishops from all around the world, the United States and Africa and, and Asia. And it's, uh, I'm sure, a, a body that needs her voice to build a beloved community, even among that group. But as we move forward, I know that she will bring us important words because I've heard her so often. And again, I've learned from her and inspired by her. She is truly a gift to our beloved community at Centenary College. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Cynthia Fierro Harvey. Thank you, Dr. Holloman, for those kind, kind words. And I greet you, friends, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm delighted to be with you today, albeit virtually. It'd be great if we could be together in person, but we'll do our best uh, connecting in this way. And I continue to learn a lot about virtual preaching and speaking, talking to a camera or an iPad or a computer is really hard work. I admire our pastors that do this week after week after week. I also know that um, attention spans are a bit more limited. So I uh, hope that we can connect here and stay well connected to one another. I had the option of pre-recording this message, but with things in the world happening so quickly, I opted to be with you live stream through Zoom. So let's keep our fingers and toes crossed that this great technology works for us this morning. We find ourselves in this unique moment in time. We're sandwiched between the day we remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. yesterday and Inauguration Day tomorrow. And in the background, we are seeing and hearing things that almost seem impossible. There are 25,000 National Guard troops gathered in Washington, D.C. in preparation for the inauguration. 25,000. That is more military presence, I understand, than in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria combined today. I called a friend of mine whose young son is in the National Guard, and, and I asked her if he was being deployed to D.C., and she said, no, he's currently in Iraq and may be safer there. Sadly, she might be right. You know, I try very hard not to operate out of fear, but my sensibilities have me doing otherwise these days. In many churches this past Sunday, the lectionary text was from John's Gospel, 
chapter one, verses 43. And I'd like to share that with you today as just sort of a, a backdrop to our conversation this day. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee and he found Philip. And Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. And Nathanael responded, can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip said, come and see. Can anything good come from Nazareth or Shreveport or Centenary College or Louisiana? Come and see, check it out. This friends might be our clarion call, our moment. As you might imagine, I've been giving a great deal of thought to the words of Dr. King, and I could stand here today and read quote after quote, and it would be so relevant for us today, it would require for me to say nothing else. But Dr. King lived during challenging times as well. And in his sermon, Remaining Awake Through a Great Revolution, he says, one of the great liabilities of life is that all too many people find themselves living amid a great period of social change. And yet they fail to develop the new attitudes, the new mental responses that the new situation demands. And they end up sleeping through a revolution. Dr. King proclaimed and demonstrated a picture of peace and nonviolence that has been so deeply violated. Those who participated in the acts of sedition now almost two weeks ago in Washington, DC, they wanted the world to believe that it was a revolution, but it was not. It was insurrection rooted in racism. The majority of persons on the Capitol grounds were white. The slurs shouted were not Christian. The signs invoking the name of Jesus in the midst of these violations were offensive. The destruction of property was inexcusable and the Confederate flag waving in the rotunda was abhorrent. Not even in the Civil War did the Confederate flag make it that far. All were signs, friends, of white supremacy that runs rampant in our country today. These divisions are becoming chasms that are swallowing up people's lives. Now, I, hear me, please hear me. I am not suggesting for a minute that every person in DC had insurrection in mind, or that every Black Lives Matter protester was driven by peace. What I am suggesting is that without a heart of peace, we're causing divisions that are becoming nearly impossible to repair. And despite the disheartening events of January 6th and the history of violence and harm that has been fueling it for generations, I believe that we are in the midst of the revolution that Dr. King references. A revolution that brings about change, turns things around, a revolution that creates a more peaceable way. Social change is happening. Peaceful protests for racial justice, which declare that Black Lives Matter are helping to make our voices heard and are changing the way that we live together. We are naming the names. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, the list goes on of those we know. And there are countless others whose names 
we will never know. My prayer is that people of faith will not sleep through this revolution. We must work tirelessly to be the ambassadors of love and grace and peace and justice that will once and for all tear down the strongholds of hatred, oppression, and division amongst us. We have to be willing to adopt the new hearts and minds and skills necessary to build a church and a world where all belong and are embraced as beloved of God, the beloved community. Dr. King's words ring true. You've already heard him. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. There are many who look upon the blemished history of the United Methodist Church and of the faith community and wonder if we will sleep through this revolution. They wonder if anything good can come from the movement to dismantle racism. We must get to work, friends, following Jesus, confronting our sinfulness, courageously resisting injustice in all of its forms, building relationships with the hurting and the marginalized and transforming our churches and the world. Our United Methodist baptismal vows ask this question. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? How will you answer that question today? It could be the answer that answers, can anything good come from? We're called to care for the hurting, the hungry, the thirsty, those who've been tossed to the side by our own humanity. You know, this year we've had several parallel pandemics happening at once. COVID-19 has impacted every corner of the world. And at the same time, this has not happened in most of our collective memory. We've lost loved ones, friends, coworkers, and neighbors, and continue to do so. And COVID-19 has killed disproportionately more persons of color. Like many disasters, this disaster has marginalized the marginalized. We've had an economic disaster impacting many. Thousands upon thousands have, have lost their jobs. Businesses have had to close. More people have filed for unemployment that we can keep count. People are finding it harder and harder to pay their mortgage, their rent. They keep, can't keep food in the fridge. It's tragic at so many levels. And again, the marginalized keep getting marginalized. And we have a racial pandemic. And in Louisiana, we were in the cone of uncertainty seven times this last hurricane season and impacted directly by three storms. And again, the marginalized just got more marginalized. We've encountered worry, a mental health crisis. Depression is at an all time high. Suicide, death by overdose. We are in a crisis that we cannot sleep through. And how often in our lives, and especially this past year, and in the first days of 2021, have we wondered, will there be enough? Enough toilet paper, enough hand sanitizer, enough food to eat enough jobs, enough vaccines, enough hospital beds, enough ventilators, enough security, enough votes. These are very real and valid questions that I must admit I've asked myself. And I know if you are one who does not have food or a job or you're sick or in harm's way, it is even more real 
for you. So what would it take to gain the assurance that in God, we have more than enough, that we are more than enough, that we are children of God, that there is in fact something good that can come from Shreveport, from Centenary College, from Louisiana, and dare I say, the Christian community. Friends, there are people in our world that are concerned about whether they will be able to feed their children tonight, that feel less than. Many are concerned that they will not be accepted by their own families, in the classroom, in the workplace. We, you and I, we have a responsibility here to be sure that they are. We are called to feed the hungry and to care for those who continue to get marginalized and get othered. We are called to be a voice for justice. We are called to insist that there is no other or less than. There's a world out there that needs to know the love of Jesus. And for some, it might come in a bag of groceries or a job. And for others, it comes when we give them voice. We tend to always blame things on someone or something else, right? One of our campus ministers reminded me recently that that we, we tend to blame a snake, the devil, demons, and even fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. It couldn't possibly be me. We don't find fault with ourselves, right? Moi? What will we do? What will we say? Will it be said of us? There is something good that is coming from Shreveport Centenary College, Louisiana. Will you come and see? Will you take seriously the call to be ambassadors of love and grace and peace and justice that will once and for all tear down the strongholds of hatred and oppression and division among us? This will take courage and it will not be easy. But I believe in you. I believe in you, Centenary College. I believe in us. This is, this is in our mission statement. This is our mission, Centenary College. The college encourages a lifelong dedication, not only to learning, but also to serving others. It strives to overcome ignorance and intolerance, to examine ideas critically, to provide an understanding of the forces that have influenced the past, drive the present and shape the future, and to cultivate integrity intellectual and moral courage, responsibility, fairness, and compassion. This is in our mission statement. This is who we are, Centenary College. I believe it, and I believe in you. My prayer is that you will not sleep through this revolution that you will be willing to adopt a new heart, mind, and skill necessary to build a world where all belong and are embraced as beloved children of God. I'd like to close my time with you this morning with a prayer shared on January the 6th by Centenary alum, DeAndre Johnson. He's been sharing a series of wonderful prayers, but I shared this one with you today. A prayer for us. Oh, great God of all truth and light, they need you. 
We need you. I need you now, like right now. They, we, I need to hear your voice again, summoning us from death to life through death, bidding us to find you in the quiet of small things, singing over and into us a love deep, too deep for words. They, we, I, need to feel your presence again, pervading our thoughts with the awe of your power, invading our hearts with the shock of your grace, restoring our lives with the release and relief of forgiveness. They, we, I, need you, O oh God, again and again and again until there is no more they, we, I, only us, only you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Ifra Jatoy, and I serve as the SGA at large representative on the diversity committee here at Centenary. First and foremost, I would like to personally thank Bishop Cynthia Harvey for such a dynamic speech. Her words were inspiring and quite appropriate for Dream Week. We could not have chosen anyone better for this occasion. Next, I want to thank everyone who has attended, whether it be in person or has streamed on this convocation. The Diversity Committee greatly appreciates everyone who has taken time out of their day to join us. The Diversity Committee has worked hard to make this convocation special, despite the unusual circumstances that we are in. Despite COVID-19, we are persevering through this as a community. We have all gathered here together to commence during a special time, Dream Week 2021. Compared to how we've celebrated Dream Week in the past, this year looks a bit different. 
However, that has not given us a reason to cancel Dream Week. As we near the end of the convocation, I would like to thank my fellow program participants, Mr. Corey Bow, Dr. Karen Soul, Reverend Lindy Broderick, Ms. Monica Powell, Ms. Hannah Jordan, and last but not least, our president, Dr. Christopher Holloman. I would also like to extend my gratitude to the Maroon Jackets for being present at this convocation and for serving as our ushers. Marketing and communications for all their hard work the IT department, as well as the diversity committee will have spent numerous hours planning this special week. Nevertheless, Dream Week is not over. On this evening at 7 p.m., there will be a webinar by Mr. Stephen Pitters, the class of 1971, who will be sharing poetry, followed by a Q&A session facilitated by Mr. Chris Brown, our college archivist. On Wednesday, January 20th, there will be a documentary playing in a white room at 6.30 p.m. called King in the Wilderness. King in the Wilderness is an American documentary film about Martin Luther King Jr., which focuses on his final 18 months of life leading up to his assassination on April 4th, 1968. There are only 32 spots available, so please reserve your seat on Engage. On Thursday, January 21st, there will be a MLK Alumni Convocation webinar at 11.15 a.m. on Zoom. The Zoom information can be, at, can be found on Centenary's Dream Week website on Engage. Later that day, there will be another webinar entitled Becoming the Beloved Community, Healing from Within at 5 p.m. The Zoom info can be found on the Centenary website as well. This event will explore a challenging conversation regarding our current environment. The last event for Dream Week will be on Friday, January 22nd on the cap deck from 11 to 1. In the case of rain, it will be moved to the sub. It is sponsored by MSA and is entitled Express Yourself. MSA invites everyone to take a moment and share their thoughts about Dream Week theme, becoming the beloved community. And passport points will be offered for most of these events. For those here in person, you can get your passport points from the QR code printed on your program. For those live streaming, here is the code. As we close this convocation, I would like to leave you with the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As he stated that the prescription for a healthy society was not only the ending of segregation, but rather the end is reconciliation, the end is redemption, and the end is a creation of the beloved community. Again, thank you everyone. Have a wonderful day, and please be sure to engage in other Dream Week events planned for this week. Thank you.